Number nine, show that the acceleration of any object down an incline where friction behaves simply. That is where F sub K is equal to mu K N equals this thing. All right, note that the acceleration is independent of the mass and reduces the expression found in the previous problem when the friction becomes negligibly small. So uh, what I have here is I have a f picture. I know it might look a little confusing if you're just starting here with me on number nine. Uh, however, though, uh, I fully developed this entire picture in number eight. So rather than repeating myself pretty much verbatim uh, from number eight, I just took the important parts of that picture that I developed in number eight and uh, followed it here, continued it here, and now I'm just going to pick up where I left off. So if you uh, want a full discussion of number nine here, first listen to number eight and then come back and then you'll you'll pick right up where we left off all right so um so now i have everything detailed in this um a picture the only thing i didn't detail because the last question was about frictionless surface now there's friction now remember when there's friction it's important to find the normal force and what is or where is the normal force the normal force always points perpendicularly to the surface the object is moving on so the block is moving on this perpendicular surface. Therefore, the normal force is going to point up all right, from that surface. Now, I decided to you know, have the center of my coordinate system right there. So the normal force would start at that center. But all right, I think you guys get the picture. So uh, here, this vector now in red. Actually, let me do it in black. All right, The vector here in black now will represent, oops, it will represent the normal force. Okay. So this right here, I'll call it F sub N. That's the normal force. Now, how do I find the normal force? Well, remember, the only thing, the only other force that was in the problem before was just the weight of the object, all right? So in order to find the normal force, I really need to find the Y component of this vector W. I just drew the black line in, okay? I need to find this thing that I just drew in. I'll draw, one, I'll draw it one more time. I need to find the y component of the weight vector. How do I do that? Well, the weight is the hypotenuse, right? That's the w. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine, right? Let me just call this f sub y, and it's going to be negative, right? Because it's pointing down. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of that angle will equal negative f sub y all over the weight. So solving now for f sub y, it's going to equal negative w cosine theta. Right? I just transferred the w on uh, the negative on over. All right. So um, that's good. Now if the f sub y uh, value is negative, right? It is because it's pointing down. Then what does f n have to be? It's the force that is directly opposed to the f y. Right. So therefore. The Fn is the positive version, okay? So it's just positive W cosine of theta. All right, wonderful. Now, how do I find, finally, this frictional force here that's pointing back, right? That's opposing the natural motion of this object. We, we are considering that this object has an acceleration on down the slope, right? And that's what we don't know, okay? So how do I find... Um, this frictional force. Well, remember, consider the formula. They want us to talk about the kinetic one. So we're assuming it's moving already. So we're going to use this formula over here, right? The force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So the force of kinetic friction is equal to um, the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. But instead of writing normal force, I'm going to write W cosine theta. They're the same thing, so it shouldn't really matter. All right. Uh, so now we got that. Okay. So now recall that I now know this x vector. Okay. I have its value right here. And from the prior problem, remember, since it was frictionless, we only considered the f sub x as our uh, main force pulling or, right? Yeah, pulling, I would say, I guess, uh, pulling the block down the incline. Okay, just remember that f sub x, just to reiterate, uh, we would use sine to solve that from the component vector of the weight. So we'd have sine of theta is equal to uh, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So it's the sine, oop, the sine of that angle, okay, is equal to 
uh, f sub x all over w. So f sub x is equal to, f sub x, sorry, is equal to w sine theta, okay? So now here are the two forces. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to max. Now remember, the x direction here is defined as this. Okay, I'm circling it. You might say, well, wait a minute, Andrew, I only see one vector here, where's, where's the other? The other's just down here, okay? It's part of the weight. So I could shift it up here if I wanted, but I'm just gonna leave it down, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna leave it here, okay? But those are the two forces in the x direction. Notice they're pointing in opposite direction. This one's pointing in the positive x direction, and this one's pointing in the negative, okay? So now when I take this f of x value, actually, let me just do this basically. So we have the force in the x direction, that's positive, minus the force of kinetic friction should equal mass times acceleration. Now, substitute in the other values for these variables. So f of x, or f sub x, was w sine theta, and then it's minus mu sub k, mu sub k, w cosine theta. Okay, wonderful. That's equal now to max. So we're getting closer to what we need up here, but we're still not there, all right? Remember that the weight is equal to mg. So instead of writing the w's in here, I'm gonna substitute mg for that, all right? So this w, I'm gonna put mg cosine, oh, that's not cosine, sine theta, minus mu sub k. This w now becomes mg cosine theta is equal to max. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out, uh, let's see, yeah, I'm gonna pull out a common factor between this term and this term, right? What's the common factor? The common factor is mg. So now it's mg times sine theta minus mu sub k cosine theta. Okay, wonderful. That equals max, and now look. Look what we can cancel. The mass over here and the mass over here, right? I could divide this whole side by m, that would cancel that, and then divide this side by m, that would cancel that. Okay, so take care, bye-bye. So now what do we have left? Well, look at what we got, guys. We got g sine of theta minus mu sub k cosine theta is equal to ax. And doesn't that look like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? There it is. It's the same exact thing up there. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it very much. Uh, please remember to subscribe, and I will and I will see you. Well, not really see you. I'll talk to you uh, in the next video. Thank you very much.